Yay, I made it in time. Dawn made it in time for her own live. That's progress. And I've had a really different day today. Very different sort of day. Um, what are we going to do today? Today must be Monday because it's pea brain show today, which is where I do lots of different segments, lots of different topics, something for everybody. And hopefully something will inspire you today or give you a tip or something you just might learn or be interested in. So that's what my live is today. My lives on Wednesday are more the catch up, chit chat and so on and so forth. And I'm doing random lives on my other channel, Tranquility Through Life's Natural Beauty, where you will see inspiring lives in very many different ways and they are on random thursdays at random times they will be subscribers only so make sure you click the subscribe button if you want to come on those it's because i do stream yard on those ones so obviously i don't want to uh, be worrying about what's going on in the chat when you have to click in and out of stream yard to add things to the screen and so on and so forth so brain show commences what do i have to share with you today well this first topic card today i call it's all greek to me and as i always explain this is the flag of greece i live in cyprus cyprus is not a greek island it's its own country far from greece and this is the flag of cyprus and this segment can be anything and everything to do with Cyprus. I shared last week about, um, I think it was the copper, copper um, stuff that you can buy from here and how it's produced. Uh, on oh, the lace, I've covered the lace before in this as well. So I thought today, I would talk about something else you may well like to buy as a traditional item from Cyprus. And today I will read to you about the pottery in Cyprus. <clears throat> pottery in Cyprus goes back to Neolithic times. And you can see fine examples from most periods of the island's history and in all the island's archaeological museums. Traditional potters still work in the villages of Funi and Kornos using red clay from local hillsides to make cooking pots, storage jars and plant pots and many other traditional items. The pots are thrown on a small wheel turned by hand or foot. Before firing, the vessel is bound with string or cloth strips to prevent cracking and left to stand overnight. Then the potter scrapes off any excess clay and rubs the pot with a stick, then with a wet cloth to make it shine. After being left to dry away from the wind and the sun, the pot is finally fired in the wood burning kiln. Sadly, the giant onion shaped earthenware storage jars called Pitharia are no longer made but these enormous vessels are often used as decorative plant pots. Ceramic traditions continue with small potteries all over the island, making good quality, modern and ethnic ware. And because we're talking about the shapes of them, the onion shaped ones, I don't want you to get confused with the gourds that you will see. So I'll talk to you now about the decorated Gourds. The gourd is a vegetable of the marrow family that hangs from a climbing vine seen adorning the verandas of rural houses. Colochia gourds come in a range of shapes and sizes and have long been decorated and used for practical purposes by Cypriots. The bottle shaped gourd is the most useful as a wine carafe a candlestick, a container for salt or olives with its side cut off as a water ladle. 
decorating gold either by um, incising geometric patterns or motifs of animals or flowers onto them with a knife point or burning the design with a poker. It is a craft still practiced in the villages of many areas. And you also see them sometimes here. They use to make maracas. And we have some in our garden that they use to make maracas with. So they're something that people tend to take home with them from Cyprus, along with the copper, leather, and the silverware and the lace. They are the main items that you'll take back. And as I said last week, you can still see them actually making all the things and you can see they are authentic, not factory made. So do look out for that one place. Um, you can get a lot of the lace and things like that as well. Local to Limassol, where a lot of people holiday, is a little um, pedestrian street called St Andrew's Street. And that is somewhere to look for your souvenirs to take home with you. Lots of different shops and you can get things very well priced there. So let's move on swiftly to my next section. And this is a section I like to call So Grow Mo and Ho Ho Ho. So it's my little gardening section and I like to give you tips or ideas. Today I was trying to think of something a little bit different than the standard growing things I've been covering. And I saw this article about useful gadgets. And it's basically saying that there's always new things appearing all the time. How useful are they? Are they things you really need? I guess it's kind of like kitchen gadgets, isn't it? Everyone gets the latest fryer or whatever. And then it gets stashed away sometimes in a cupboard, then becomes a hand-me-down. How many things do we actually use in the garden that we do or don't? as we do with the kitchen utensils and gadgets. So obviously you can garden with just a few very basic gadgets. And I have many things that I use as multi-purpose tools. So I would rather have something that has multiple uses rather than something with just one use. And I did always say um, a few years ago, every gardening channel I was on, what is the one gadget? If you could only keep one gadget or tool for the garden, what would be that one thing you would hang on to? And I said a wheelbarrow for me. Bearing in mind, yes, you could use absolutely anything for a wheelbarrow. But for me, my hands don't work so well and I can't lift heavy things. And I have a, a large piece of land. So for me, the wheelbarrow is the most used and most convenient tool for me so let me know in the comments below what is the one tool if you could only keep one tool for the garden what would you choose and here this is a very old book i've spoken of these before i'll show you these are these were mike's mums and it's a whole series this is number 39 and they each cover two different things one in full and then another in brief such as a herb so this one for example is about blackberries the small part of the book is unusual okra or we call them ladies fingers and then they have a little bit odds and ends and the odds and ends here is useful labor saving gadgets now, this was 30 pence in England. I don't know if there's a date on it or not. It should be. 1977. Now, as I said before, they're all falling apart, most of them. I look at them and I pick what I use out of them because being in the 70s, most of the how to deal with pests, for example, it's all about chemicals, which is a huge no-no for me. 
Um, so that side of things I take no notice of and a few other ideas I don't take. It's about buy your soil and things like that. I've never bought soil and I never will buy soil. I have to make all my own. I make my own compost because here we're on mountain rock. Hence why I do hoogle beds and raised growing beds. But you do see some trees planted here. We just have to dig and see what we could get down to, whether we get between a bit of rock or not. So often we will start digging a hole and abandon it. And as you will see in one of my work away videos, um, Magnus, he dug holes for me. And you see one bit where I show you he dug down or maybe about this much and it was all going well and then I showed that he hit a great big bit of white rock and he just adjusted the hole across so we can try and grow things but on the whole nothing's directly in the ground so what gadgets do they talk about here bear in mind it's the 70s it's saying there's much satisfaction to be gained from actually making your own gadgets at little or no cost. And that's something Mike's always done for his engineering. He often made his own engineering tools. Um, obviously, we all use um, old things we've got to make tools, such as an old gallon container type thing. And you can make scoops out of those and so forth. Um, so and they're just going to describe a few because they can't cover everything and where you can get them from before buying any gadget particularly more expensive ones make sure you know exactly what it is and what it can and can't do and how it will help you examine as wide a range as possible of different versions of the same gadget and pick the best always ask yourself is it actually worth buying it with money that might be better spent on more seeds and so on. So there's that. There's something that looks good. Sometimes a brand name doesn't mean it's a better tool. Sometimes a cheaper tool might not be as good, but sometimes a cheaper tool might actually be better. So do know what you're buying particularly things like trowels and garden tools. I've always talked about how sometimes the metal is only this much, let's say a little hand trowel, and then you've got, let's say, a wooden um, handle to it. And the point where it takes the force of digging is exactly where it will break and needs to be very sturdy metal. Um what have they got here a garden line is something they say is important the most invaluable gadget you can buy the line must be stretched taut to ensure accurate row marking hmm, i think you can make that yourself do you not uh what else have they got a simple automatic seed sower makes the job of sowing many rows less tiring and more accurate it's adjustable both for different side seeds and for sowing rates. Yes, if you're going to sow as a market garden or for selling, that kind of thing, you're doing fields and fields of sowing, yes. But I'm pretty sure you could make something these days. If you find it difficult to tell whether your plants need watering, a soil moisture indicator is the answer. The lights indicate moisture content when the probe is inserted. That sounds pretty cool. But I think if you stick your finger in the soil, you've got a bit more idea. <laughs> Frugal me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> oh, it's got an on-off button. Well, I don't know how that worked. Has it got a battery? I doubt if it was solar in those days. Hmm. Let's see if they say any more of that. Um, don't just buy a gadget that is highly recommended, particularly by the man manufacturer. <laughs> well, this is like just because a YouTuber promotes it or you see someone going on how wonderful something is in reviews. I talk about this a lot. 
more than likely they've got the product either free or on a huge discount if they promote it and they're hardly going to say bad things about it because they're not going to be sent any more things so that um if you've rushed out and bought something you might find it spends most of the year lying unused in the shed yes it's like we could all get carried away with buying something particularly if there's a salesman there pushing something soil moisture indicators oh this is it i want to see how it works frequently plants produce crops that are much reduced in weight or quality due mainly to the lack of water it is now well established that when plants are visibly visibly wilting, damage has already occurred and may be permanent. Beginners, on the other hand, tend to water their plants too often, which can also be harmful. Yes, because roots need to find water. So if you keep throwing water at a crop, then obviously it's not going to search for water and spread its roots. And particularly trees, they want to go down with their roots and spread across it's not always easy to assess with certainty when a crop needs watering if you find this a problem it's worth investing in a soil moisture indicator it's a shame they haven't put prices of things actually in here <clears throat> some types of moisture indicators need no batteries i was asking this while for others you do need to buy a small battery but this will cost you very little and should last for about a year. Probably not so much in these days because <laughs> they make batteries that don't last. So you have to keep buying more. Um, some models indicate the degree of soil moisture by means of the varying, in, varying intensity of three electronic lights at the top of the instrument. One for wet, one for moist and the other for dry. These light up when you insert the metal probe of the instrument into the soil to the root depth of the plant and press a small button on the casing so that tells you what the measurements go and how to read it off what else we got adjustable seed sowers well that's kind of standard we know what they are um, the front wheel bears a v-shaped rib which cuts out a drill at the correct depth for most vegetable seeds there's additional device that cuts further into the soil for those seeds that require deeper sowing. There's also a drag chain to cover the seeds with soil. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, the rear wheel firms the soil and gives additional stability to the sower. Oh, I didn't realise that. I thought they just made the drills and dropped the seeds in. That's pretty good. Um Finally, there's also an arm at right angles to the seed sowing section, which marks out the position of the next row. At the other end of the scale, you can buy little handheld plastic seed sowers. These consist of a compartment into which you put the seeds and from which the seeds are shaken out the soil or compost through an adjustable opening. Yeah, I know those. That's mostly how a lot of people do seed sowing for grass. And I've seen like the trolley, the big rectangle sort of trolley that you push along it gradually turns them out. Something else that they call, they call this section useful gadgets is post supports. Hmm. Not very frugal. <laughs> I think these days we're all so apt at finding fantastic things to grow in and as supporters. One job which can sometimes present great difficulties is a fixed fence post. It may involve standing on unsteady steps, mm, sloping wet concrete around, or waiting for workmen who fail to arrive on time. Oh dear. Using post supports provides an easy alternative method of doing the job. Each support consists of a hollow box shaped metal socket. Uh, taper to a point from its lower face. You simply hammer the tapered end into the ground, position the end of the fence post into the socket and secure it, secure it by means of bolts passing through holes and into the socket. The supports are available in two widths to accommodate different size posts. Yeah. Homemade gadgets. Um, with a little time and care, you can make your own gadgets that will save both time and money. <clears throat> Making gadgets has an added attraction for the handyman. 
handyman, the satisfaction of making as well as using them. None of the gadgets described below require special skills or special tools to construct. This will be interesting. Soil leveller is the first one. Spring soil cultivation often has to be done in a hurry during the short periods when the ground is neither too wet or too dry. To help speed up this task and make it easier, you can make a soil leveller from pieces of wood, nails or screws and bricks. When pulled over rough dug ground, this tool will shatter the lumps of soil and level the ground at the same time. The leveller is made from five short wooden boards, which when assembled look like short sections of a pair of wide steps. Here. Here. Hmm. Uh, the cross boards are angled towards the direction in which you pull the device by means of a loop of rope attached to the front board. To use this gadget does require a fair amount of physical effort, but it, it, it is an extremely good way of preparing the soil quickly, especially for the weekend gardener with a medium size or large plot. If you find it needs extra weight, screw 2.5 centimetres, one inch square battens onto the boards as shown in the diagram to provide a cradle for the bricks. So I'll show you that again. And that's what they've done there. They've put the bricks in in the cradle for a bit more weight. <clears throat> so there's that. Uh, this is something else they say is a homemade gadget you can make. Multi-drill marker. During spring, when there are many jobs waiting to be done all at the same time, the task of measuring and drawing out each seed drill can be very time consuming. An easily made multi-drill marker can save you time by allowing you to take out several seed drills at the same time. This device consists of a piece of wood about 12.5 centimetres, five inch wide and 12 millimetres, half an inch thick with four markers, short pieces of wood with their ends sharpened to a point Screw to the main piece as shown in the diagram, I'll show you in a minute. These markers should each be the same distance apart. That distance and hence the length of the main piece depending on the crop being sown. The most useful spacing to choose is 25 centimetres, 10 inches, between markers, as this is a row spacing that can be used for many vegetables. The wooden handle is fixed to the centrepiece by means of a hinge or nails and is used to pull the multi-drill marker along the surface of the seedbed so the markers draw out four drills in the soil. So that's, that's this here from the fingers. This is drawing out four at one time. There's that. Um, with practice, you will find you can adjust the depth of the drills to suit the crop being sown by varying the pressure with which you pull the markers towards you as when drawing out a single drill using a draw hoe or rake. When drawing out the first set of drills with the tool, mark off the position of the first drill with the garden line and then place the edge of the tool against it. The remaining rows will then be marked out automatically. You may consider it worthwhile to elaborate on this design by making the four markers adjustable to different distances apart. You could do this by attaching the markers to the main piece by means of bolts, securing them by nuts on each side. Three useful distances would be 15 centimetres, 23 centimetres and 30 centimetres. Then, if you have attached enough bolts at the correct distances apart, you'll be able to draw one set of drills at a distance of, say, 23 centimetres apart, and then unbolt the markers and fix them onto bolts at a wider spacing, say, 30 centimetres, to draw out the drills for sowing a different crop. Alternatively, 
you can make several of these tools, each with its own markers spaced at a different distance. <clears throat> Have a drink. Let me read the next one. So the next thing they say you can make yourself <clears throat> is a multi-seed sower. I've seen this used a lot when people plant, say, in greenhouses in plastic. When you put the plastic on the ground, stop weeds coming up or the weed matting. And then you want things spread out the right distance to neat and tidy. So here's a picture of it. <clears throat> and I've seen people, when they put the plastic down and they want to space out like this, they use uh, like a soldering iron and it just burns the holes in the right places. <clears throat> So a multi-seed sower, they say, this useful gadget saves you time when sowing seeds in a seed tray or frames by quickly and accurately spacing out the seed. It will also save you money by economising on the seed. It consists of a sheet of six millimetres thick plywood cut to fit the inside of a standard seed tray, approximately 35 centimetres by 21 centimetres. Through this, drill six millimetre holes evenly spaced with either eight rows each of six holes or nine rows each of five holes. I'll show you again. So we're, we're up here now. He's a left-hander. <laughs> I spot that instantly. Um, after drilling the holes, sand down the sheets to remove the rough edges and screw or glue two pieces of wood to serve as handles. This is the most useful tool for sowing fine seeds, which will be scattered thinly over the top surface of the gadget. The ball can then be removed carefully by means of the handles, and any seeds remaining on the surface tap gently into the seed packet and save for the next sowing. The seed should then be pressed lightly into the compost or soil with a firmer, with a firmer, firmer, <laughs> taking great care not to dislodge them. The multi sower can also be used for sowing larger seeds or pelleted seeds, although these could be sown quite easily and accurately by hand. And then they suggest making your own multi planter. Thanks for the thumbs up. This consists of a lath, a long piece of wood, square or rectangle cross section, which is drilled with a series of six millimetre holes at two convenient sets of spacing. One spacing on each side, sorry, one spacing on each of two opposite sides of the lath or lathe, some of you say. Suitably trimmed short sections of dowling are glued into each hole Leave it a five centimetre length protruding. I'll show you it because obviously if you don't see it, you're like, what? So here. I want to know, guys, if any of you do anything like this or is giving you inspiration. You can use this tool in two ways. Either pushing the space dowels into the soil by hand or with your foot or just marking the position of the planting holes on the soil surface with a scratching action. You can make two of these tools, one with dowels spaced 15 centimetres and 23 centimetres apart, the other with spaces of 30 centimetres and 45 centimetres between the dowels. This range of distances will be adequate for a number of the most commonly transplanted crops, such as onions, leeks, lettuce, smaller types of cabbage and tomatoes. Uh, seeing how many more there are, whether we want to continue with this now. Oh, there's a lot more. So I think we'll leave that up to there and then maybe come back to this one another day. Because if I have people watching that aren't gardeners. <laughs> so I normally try and keep these sections short and sweet. But let me know what super tools you have designed for yourself out of what. And also, what is your one tool in the garden you would not be without?
Okay, let's move on now to my section, inspiration and creation. A lot of you say you really like this that I made. I like doing things like this, paper craft things. And this also fits very nicely with my section, coffee break, what to watch, something you may have missed seeing. So I'm recommending a particular short video that I think you will enjoy. And a lot of people, particularly today, I've been on channels and they're talking about meditation or relaxing or calming or anti-stress. And I have a video which I put in the link below. It says coffee break, what to watch video or something like that. And it's a video I've done. It's relaxing music. If you like to meditate, you can use it as meditational. If you don't, you can just relax, chill out with it with your cup of coffee, and you can watch the sunset that I've photographed from my garden. So all bar one, and you'll see the one that isn't. Tell me if you can tell me the one video, uh, the one photograph in there that isn't from my garden. It's somewhere I went and I saw a sunset. But all the rest are from my actual garden. Uh, there's a couple of sunrise pictures at the very beginning as well. My name's Dawn, sunrise, hello. <laughs> um, so do share the video as well if you like it. As I say, it's got very calming music and you can either meditate to it or just chill out or have your tea or coffee while you're watching them. It's very short. I think it's about three minutes or something like that. It's very short. And what inspired me to choose that one today was I wanted to share with you some pictures I've got of sunsets. I do like sunsets. I particularly like pinks and purples in a sunset. Not overly keen on the orange and the yellows unless they're very vibrant, which you will see in my photographs that I've done. This is a postcard, by the way. Does it say where it is? Mm. oh it says Greece so nowhere near here at all but we have brilliant sunsets nearly every night absolute vibrant sunset so that's one and then these I bought on a holiday they've come out of the frames they need fixing but I'll try and show them individually to you they need fixing oh that that's not really a sunset. It's the moon's up. So I'm hoping these will inspire you to, if you draw or paint or craft or write, maybe it inspires you to write. Or maybe it will inspire you to go out somewhere and just see the beauty of nature around you. So that's one. That's two. That's three in a set. That's three. Isn't that beautiful? Reminds me a little bit of the house we're selling in Ziggy that you just walked down and the beach is right there. And then we've got two more sets of three. As I say, they're all coming out of their... Uh, <laughs> frames so I've got to redo these Oops, that's not near enough for you that's one these were in case you're wondering these were from for ventura and the reason i know that <laughs> i bought them when we was on holiday there many years ago when we were first going out together me and mike Apart from Cyprus, that's the uh, only place we've been together. And then we got married here. There. So you got if you go to the northeast, the very top, but the east is sand dunes for miles and miles and miles in yellow sand. I don't like um, the countries where you get the black sand, the volcanic sand. I don't like that. I don't find that relaxing at all. 
there's another one there and that's what the house is all like there and then there's another set of three it's a frame it's another frame I need to do something nice with these the last three we have that one you can see why i bought them because not only did it remind me of my time there but we've got the nice sunset pictures these were from a local artist as you can see from the signature at the bottom i like to support people particularly craft people and the last one is there so as i say do check out my photographs of sunsets that i did from here in my garden as i say we're in a prime position for sunsets here absolutely awesome um so the link is in the description below to see the video of those and don't forget to leave a comment there and see if you can tell me which one wasn't photograph from here as one and if you know my channel you will know which one it is okay let's move on to the jokes we're all here for the jokes <laughs> jokes quotes puns and fun i haven't actually got beyond the jokes yet i don't think everyone seems to like the jokes so i'm sticking with the jokes for now i might switch it up at some point so let's see. First joke. I wrote a song about a tortilla. Actually, it was more of a rap. <laughs> more of a rap. Cool. Did you hear about the kidnapping at school? He woke up in time to go home. Did you hear about the kid napping at school? Nah. <laughs> Hey, Andrea, stuck in the ads. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking about putting, um, well, you probably can't hear me yet. I, I don't have ads, so I don't know if you can still hear or not. When, you're, when you've got the ads, can you still watch or not? I don't get ads, ever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't pay not to have ads. I just do a, a free ad blocker broke though oh you broke oh bless you <laughs> hope you're not broken can't see you till the ads are done right what was it on what was it about because i know everyone would get completely different ads it's not like there's one ad for everybody it depends on uh i'm just interested to see what you get i can't control those <laughs> can't control them on shoes oh well that's okay uh, see, they've not really been um, spying on you because it would have been about... Oh, yes, I was going to say, it would have been slippers. Hey, Andrea, that's why you had one on shoes. I was just going to say, normally you get something you've been talking about. That's why you've got a mat. Slippers. <laughs> but they weren't slippers. No, but they didn't have a slipper advert, so they sent you the next possible. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah, uh, dear. Okay, next joke. Um, why do you never see pigs in trees? Well, they're great at hiding. <laughs> they want me to get running shoes instead of relaxing, I guess. <laughs> Run into the shop to get cakes. <laughs> do you know the new band called Duvet? They're a cover band. <laughs> And a cover band. Oh, dear. Where were Noah's bees mentioned? In the archives. Uh, in the archives. Oh, you like that idea, running for cakes? <laughs> okay, last joke of the day. Do you like Russian dolls? They're so full of themselves. <laughs> They're so full of themselves. <laughs> Oh, and there goes Andrea with the, shall I ban her? We'll show her. 
<laughs> oh dear, that's so funny. <laughs> cakes, all the cakes. Which one will I have? Mm, mm, mm. A bit of all of them. <laughs> a bit of all of them. <laughs> oh dear. So, what shall we do now? What shall we do now? Let's do... <laughs> for Andrea. Cake. Oh, look, it's Andrea's cake there. Max hacks, facts and stats. Any facts, hacks, stats or knacks? I'm kind of doing knacks and tips at the moment. Tips, tricks and hacks at the minute. So, today... I thought we would do tips and hacks on cakes. <laughs> Why did I think of that? Mm, I thought Andrea might be in today. So I thought we would focus on Andrea. So these are how many am I shared today? One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to do five hacks or tips about making cakes. Tell me if any of these you know or are a new tip for you. First one, for a rich fruit cake, use half plain and half self-raising flour and it gives a better result. Interesting. Second tip, a bowl of water placed in an electric oven will help keep a fruit fruit cake moist, a rich fruit cake moist. <clears throat> Third tip, if a cake is inclined to stick to the tin, stand the tin on a damp cloth for a few minutes. Oh, thanks, Andrea. So if a cake is inclined to stick to the tin, stand the tin on a damp cloth for a few minutes. I've not thought of that one. So that's interesting. That's probably quite useful, that one. Um, slice stale fruit cake thinly. Dampen with sherry and bake between thin layers of pastry and then cut into squares. I was like, oh, I wasn't going to read that one. I have to mark that I've done it now because if I don't, you'll read the same things again. Next one. To keep a fruitcake moist, place in an airtight tin with an apple. Upside down cake on the cloth. <laughs> no, the tin. Put the tin on the damp cloth before you tip it out and then it would come out of the cake on the cloth. <laughs> Last one. An easy way to fill an icing bag is to put the empty bag inside a jug or glass and fold the bag over the top edge and then fill. <laughs> you make me laugh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have a drinky poo. What's Dawn drinking? Hmm. Dawn drinking. Hmm. Looks misty. That's a clue. It's a cluage. Okay, I have a new section today. I haven't made a circle thing for it because I only thought about calling it something and doing it as a feature. Coconut water. Okay, not coconut water. No. Not coconut water. No. <laughs> so I'm going to call this section, it won't be every week, but it will be a special. I'm going to call it the ABCs. Hey, Danny, how are you doing? I'm explaining I'm going to start a new section. It won't be every week. Unfilled to tap water from New York. <laughs> no. <laughs> We're guessing, Danny, what Dawn's drinking. It's cloudy. That's a clue. Hmm. So this new section that, as I say, will be a special section now and then. And you'll understand why it can't be every week. 
A, B, C's, I'm going to call it. And that stands for Awesome Badges Channel Shoutouts. What's that, Dawn? What's Awesome Badges Channel Shoutout? Well, what's missing? What's missing? Oh, hi, Squirrely. What's missing from here? Hmm, hi, digging. <laughs> Do you know what's missing from here? This will be a clue. Hmm, anyone know what's missing? Normally on this gold board. What, what's always on the gold board? Hmm, everyone gets it. Watermelon Kool-Aid. We don't have Kool-Aid in Cyprus. So it's not that. <laughs> Your face is missing because you moved to the side. What are you watching on? I'm in the middle of the screen. Oh, here. <laughs> here. I thought you meant I'd gone off the screen. Uh, no. I normally have something on there. Nobody know? Call me humour. Yes, yes. I used to originally put the mood boards up on there. Now I just show them. But there's been something on there for quite some time now. Oh, guys. No one remember what you always see on there and I keep talking about them. It was my stickers. It was my stickers. And I had this sticker. Soil Family Expo, which is from Black's Tropical. Oh, you remember now. Black's Tropical Homestead, that's from Sherry. And I think Thursday is she's talking about the new one, new expo for 2023. I can't go on on a Thursday, so I'll have to catch up with that. So that sticker. And the other sticker was from her channel, her channel sticker. Now, ABCs, I said it's called Awesome Badges Channel Shoutout, ABCs, ABCs. And what I'm going to do now is anyone that sends me a sticker now, I'm making them into badges. That's different. Have you seen that before? No, Dawn likes to be different. I was doing them all on there. That haven't been sent anymore. So I was like, that's sad. So I'm making them into badges. And then every now and then I will wear them on my lives. So it, this is ABC's Awesome Badges channel shout outs. So the first one today. Oh, look, it's a badge. Black's Tropical Homestead Soil Family. Yay. And I will um try and remember to wear them on some videos as well so look out for badges if you do stickers and you want to send them to me i can't send you anything back so only if it's a free not a swappy and i will wear my badges my sticker badges on some of my videos so the channels that send them will be like oh and I will try and mention them as well, maybe put a link in. I don't always remember to do links. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I don't know if any of you guys do stickers. As I say, I can't send you anything back. So if you're someone who does a swap C, don't send them to me. If you just want me to make it into a badge, I will do it. <laughs> I will do it. What I should do is wear it up here, but I do want to show it until I told you what I was doing with them. No, I should wear them up here. So this would be an awesome shout out for your channels because I can't afford to buy things of merch and things. There you go, look. And that would be awesome. An extra shout out for some channels. So this is ABCs. <laughs> and it was funny. Uh, Andrew, was you on Sherry's live? I can't remember. But I was on her live today, which is just before mine. So I have to dip out before it finishes because I have to type everything in, in for my live. Um and I was on it. I said, oh, Sherry, I've done something with your bear, with your stickers. <laughs> Bless her. She said, oh, something happened to them. Oh, she said, I'll send you some more. So I put something about 
no, I, I've done good. I've done good with them. Something good with them. And she went, you've lost them. Oh, don't worry about trying to find them. <laughs> so if Sherry's got to this part in the video, then she will see what I've done. And don't you think that is pretty awesome? That is pretty awesome. I just go be an issue now if I get sent loads, which I won't. People don't send me things. <laughs> if I got loads, I'll be like, oh. <laughs> but I only want to wear one at a time. Go and wear one at a time. So obviously, the sooner they get sent, the more often they get worn. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, where are we? Oh, the sticker board. Yeah, remembered. Sweet. I really need to go next year. It looked awesome. It really did. If I could travel, I would try and go somewhere like that. Uh, they're only like 20 to 30 minutes away from me. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Oh, that's awesome. If you go, give Sherry a hug and say that's from Dawn in Cyprus. You'll be like, whoa. <laughs> uh danny i'm planning to go next year how far away are you danny uh that'd be awesome danny i can meet you oh you're making me sad now <laughs> that would be great yes i was but i had to leave because my freeze dry arrived ah i thought i'd seen you in there yes because we were saying hello in there weren't we at the beginning as I say, I have to leave that a bit early. I'm very sad because I do love her lives. There's so much info in there. Um, yeah, so no one's guessed my drink yet. No one's guessed or drinky <laughs> Seven hours away. Well, that's not too bad then, is it? And if you need it, they do recommend um, accommodation and things like that. Nope. Not that, Andrea. Not that. Not that. You're doing very well guessing. <laughs> You're thinking of anything cloudy. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Let's move on to Blast from the Past. So this is anything to do with the past. Which still lasts the 1970s. The suspense is killing you. What? The drink? The drink? <laughs> You know, I'll finish and forget to say. <laughs> I just, I'll keep going while Andrew is making guesses. Oh, the drink. Do you want me to tell you? Not that loud. Let me do this one and then remind me to tell you. Now, this is to do with, yes. <laughs> All right, no, I'll tell you now. It's Ouzo, which some of you might know as Perno. Ouzo and lemonade, so it's a spirit. So Ouzo, it smells of aniseed, so it's like an aniseed um, spirit, aniseed spirit, not to be confused with the ghost. No. <laughs> oh, never guessed, never heard of it. Oh, you're missing a treat. It's not too aniseedy, as in if you don't like aniseed, you wouldn't like it. But you can smell it. It smells really nice smell. See? It's really nice. Oh, you wouldn't have guessed it. You don't know it. You're drinking a ghost. <laughs> For sure. It's got lemonade in, so. Um... <laughs> and it's good because if you don't like too much of the flavour, you have more lemonade. It's a refreshing drink. Guess which way I'm doing it. I was getting tipsy with us live today. <laughs> we normally have a little drinky poo because it's now 876, 624. So, and normally if Mike's fish doing whatever he, he says, oh, should we sit out on the patio and have a little drink? I'm, I've got my life. He goes, I know, but you can sit in a bit there. 11.24 a.m. there, drinky poo. Yep. Cheers. Or as we say in Cyprus, yamas. Or the full saying is stingy yamas to your health. Yamas. So we're talking about now the Wizard of Oz. Now, as you probably know, there's a lot of info about the Wizard of Oz. So I've tried to find you some different info of it. There's a lot of horror stories of filming of it and so on and so forth. But I want to go back a bit and also tell you why it was called Oz, 
I wonder if any of you know before I get to saying about why it was called odd stingy amethyst. <laughs> Nearly stin ye stin to your ye health. Stin ye yamas. You can just say yamas, which is like cheers. Yay! There you go, Andrea. Hey, Steve Yamas. We just go Yamas. Yamas. So, The Wizard of Oz, let's backtrack. Since its publication in 1900, did you know that? L. Frank Brooms, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz, has captured the imagination of both young and old alike. Learning stuff today, always. Uh, Barnes intention was to create a new kind of American fairy tale. It inspires, he wrote, to be a modernised fairy tale in which the wonderment and joys are retained and the heartaches and nightmares left out. But even so, the book does have its fair share of dark moments and enchanted axes, flying monkeys and dreadful monsters. Lavishly illustrated, the book gave rise to many sequels, 44 in total, and the magical land of Oz called because he had a filing cabinet with a drawer marked O2Z, Oz. Um, where are we? The land of Oz calmed down and became a place where nobody ever died or got sick and where there was no use for money. The first stage adaptation appeared as early as in 1902 in a vaudeville extravaganza written in part by Brum himself. For the purpose of the variety stage, Toto the dog became the pantomime cow and a whole host of new characters appeared with such unlikely names as Trixie Trifle and Sir Dashmoff Daly, a poet. The show did contribute some elements to the Oz legend. The deadly poppy field took on its role as it does now with its magical snowfall. The caperings we now associate with the scarecrow and the tin man also owe much to the comedians who played them in 1902. The success of the show prompted Brum to try his hand in the new me medium of silent film. This failed and the story resisted all attempts to be captured on film until 1939 when sound and colour were available to bring us to life. It's interesting to note that a 1925 silent film version featured a then unknown Oliver Hardy as the Tin Man from Laurel and Hardy. It is, of course, the 1939 film version that is most people's introduction to the world of Oz. Despite getting through 11 writers, four directors, 65 sets and every available arc light in Hollywood, the film is now hailed as a classic. The original reception was not so warm and it was not until the movie became a Christmas tradition on television thanks to a lucrative TV deal that the film began to pay for itself. Cinema history was made nevertheless and in 1987 the wheel turned to full circle when the Royal Shakespeare Company created a stage version of the film which in turn owed much to the 1902 adaptation which had inspired so many of the creative team, team that wrote the movie magic for MGM. Wow. So, yeah, Oz was because he had a filing cabinet. He was looking around and it's got O to Z or O to Z, whichever you say. Um, yeah. So some interesting facts there. Now, what I would like to do is continue because we was having such a laugh with my sorting and decluttering that I didn't finish it off. And I thought I would leave it to continue today. So this is part of my 
pastimes, pastimes, because it's the card games that I had from a child, a few other bits, and it also goes with my theme of discover, sort, declutter, and organize. And if you didn't see my last live, then go back and see it, particularly, I think it's about halfway through onwards, and Andrea was there. <laughs> And we had such a laugh. It was hilarious. I won't go into it. And I said the funniest live I've ever done. And it was just so instant. It was just, um, just I was taking cards out and it just became a, a, just a laugh. You have to go and watch it to see. So I didn't get as far <laughs> as I wanted to with my decluttering. It's a shoebox. And it's just full of my old card games and a few little bits. We did have fun, Andrea. And I thank you for that. It was you and Blue, wasn't it? And we were just having such a laugh. And as I say, I hadn't looked at them for years. I knew there were cards and things in there. And as we were getting them out, it was so funny. It really was. Oh, I didn't calm down from that for a long time. So I haven't looked at any more. So now we have, I've just pulled out, it's picture puzzles, 18 picture cards, say what you see. Lou was here multitasking while she was cooking. <laughs> now it looks old, this, it's not an old game. It's meant to look like an old game, or it's a, a new version of an old game. So these aren't old, let's see if there's a date on here. 2006 so it's meant to represent an old game but it's a modern copy if you like and it says this 1950s forerunner of catchphrase simply say what you see in the picture a great game with an original twist includes 18 picture cards so let's see let's see if we can play so only 18, that's not a lot, is it, really? You couldn't play it again and again and again. You'd have to put it away. So say what you say. I don't think I can show that. <laughs> Already. <laughs> and, you know, it's got to be bad in today's terms if you can't even show it. Okay. So here, say what you see. Oh, let me put my elbow on the table and I won't wiggle around. So what is it? A phrase, is it? It's a phrase. I need to watch her. Don't pay UK videos. See what it's about. I haven't watched yet. I watched it, even though it doesn't apply to being the slightest. It came with the naughty cards. <laughs> let's just say it was tribes. In case you're wondering what is tribes, let's say that. So there. I think I need to look at the answers to get a get an idea it's supposed to be sayings isn't it so what's that say number seven number seven oh gosh it's so small so you can't cheat i guess to catch a crab is that a saying not what i've heard of <laughs> to catch a crab shrunken heads uh, birthday suit tribes no not birthday suit not birthday soup actual tribes actual tribes okay so yeah i've never heard of to catch a crab so that was no good oh he was a man on the box yeah look pipe smoking again drawing does something to do with drawing i've tried my hardest not to catch crabs <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> oh dear Today's live theme is mystery and guessing. Yeah, laugh out loud, Danny. Good grief. So what's this? Drawing? Drawing something. Say what you say. Draw. He's a left-hander as well, look. That means you're creative. <laughs> Skull. <laughs> oh, good grief, she says. <laughs> So this says number eight. 
Oh, I need a magnifying glass. Eight. To draw a blank. Oh, yes, we know that. To draw a blank. I'm dead. Laugh out loud. Uh, glad you're laughing with me. Of course, Danny. So sense of humour. I'm pretty sure we'd all get on great if we were in person. Yeah, to draw a blank. That's a good one. I like that. What's this one? Oh, it's a big bird. <laughs> if I was to smoke the pipe, I would draw a blank too. <laughs> That's like icicles coming up down. Oh, no, it's the steam of the turkey. I thought she hadn't defrosted it properly. <laughs> Sorry if I'm wobbling it around. Uh, so what's that? Don't. No, not don't cook your goose, because that's not a goose, is it? That looks like a turkey or a chicken. Does a goose look the same as a turkey or chicken? Danny's our role today. Cool. Don't cook your chicken. No. What's the saying? That's a huge chicken. Oh, an ostrich. I've had ostrich. It's really nice. It is like chicken, but slightly richer. Not as rich as like duck. But, yeah, and there's an ostrich farm near here. I think it's closed now. I had, where did I have ostrich? When I went to Cuba, there's an island off of Cuba that the whole island is a safari, as in the animals are roaming free around the whole island. So it's not like a tourist safari, as in they're compounded on the outskirts. The whole island is a wild safari and after you see all the animals, you work on it. <laughs> so I had um, bison, zebra. Zebra was okay. Yes, I have. Bison was tough. Can't remember what else I had. No, Andrea, I couldn't. <laughs> zebra, yeah, it's yeah, zebra. So let's look this one up. Number nine. Need a magnifying glass. To cook one's goose. To cook one's goose. There you go. It's not an ostrich. It's a goose. <laughs> okay. What's this one? Oh, look. Torture. What's this saying? I'm sure you can come up with something funny. I'm getting pins and needles in my foot while I'm sitting. Hmm. Drill. Filling. He's a left-hander as well, look, guys. I just so spot them. I really do. He's a left-hander. Now, he shouldn't be a dentist if he's a left-hander. <laughs> he's a... Uh, the side of his brain that does like thoughts as in um, skill but not craft skill. He shouldn't be a dentist. I'll be right back. I need some water from laughing so hard. I'll try not to get distracted by the bagels this time. Oh, yes. It's worth saying, can I get some of that gas first? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. No, it's so funny. He's saying... Just before I came here, I went and bought a fountain from the garden centre. <laughs> I went and bought a fountain from the garden centre. Uh, and the dentist is saying, my, that was a funny request for a place to have a tattoo. <laughs> Andrea. Okay, I'm back. See, I told you, my house is small, Dawn. There's just a lot of distractions from my squirrel brain. That was Blue saying that. She's obviously never been to my house. Yeah, that's a weird place to want a tattoo, for sure. All I can think of is drilling. Or wisdom. Looks like Frankenstein sitting there. Let's see, what number's that? Ten. I'm going to have to do this before it gets dark. Let me put my little light on. You can have a look at Tropical Homestead. 
There's Tropical Homestead. Black's Tropical Homestead. Go and see Sherry's channel. You don't see me talking, Danny. Oh, I don't. Well, hold on. Uh, I don't see these other comments you're reading. <laughs> don't see me talking, Danny. Just shows me and Andrea here. Uh, it shows me five, but it doesn't mean people are in the chat. What number was I looking up? Ten. Ten says, what? <laughs> See, they might be American things. To stop the rot. Do you guys know that saying? To stop the rot. Never heard of that. Never heard of it. Maybe these are American. <laughs> <laughs> we're having more fun thinking of other things with them okay what's this oh i know straight away what this is oh that's easy now I get this one never heard of it either no nor me i mean considering there's only 18 cards they could have actually have put things people know oh there you go see squirrels is there shirley squirrel is there yeah, barking up the wrong tree. Either that or is, uh, um, don't forget to pack your ladder. He's got his ladder over here. Cat's up there. Yeah, barking up the wrong tree. That was a good one, but it was a bit obvious, I suppose. Okay. You know what? I'll look at, pardon me, I'll look at the answer. It'll be something else entirely. Now, if they were singing, I would have guessed singing from the same hymn sheet or whatever the saying is, but they're not singing. I would have said singing off the same hymn sheet. Danny's young mind is very observant. It's obvious <laughs> because I've got it. Sheesh. <laughs> oh, so it's playing, playing, playing the note. Terrible at sayings. No, the cards are just terrible. Playing by the same notes. I don't know. 12. I felt special and you just get me when I'm down. <laughs> Danny, send me a sticker. I'll make you feel special. Do you do stickers? I think you've started doing things. Number 12. 12. To face the music. All right, okay, yeah. Face the music. Yes, I have stickers and magnets. All magnets. I can't attach a magnet. Oh, you can, can't you? You could put a magnet behind and then put the magnet on the front. Easy. Okay, what's this one? Okay, not sure. I know what this sign is. Does my bum look big in this? <laughs> Is your dress on your about page? Um, it's actually in the description here. No, it's not on my about page as far as I know. Um, but it's definitely under this. Under this live. I try and put all my info, all my PayPal and all things like that, I try and put under my live. So if anyone asks where it is, I can say it's a live. Sometimes I forget or it doesn't go there. Oh, get off your high horse. I think it's something about she's heading for the bush. Something about heading for the bush, look. I think it's something to do with that. Hold your horses. Oh, that's probably it. Yeah, could be that, couldn't it? Let's see, number 13. Oh. No, it's not. I thought your answers were much better. To ride for a fall. <laughs> heard of that. <laughs> to ride for a fall. No. I think hold your horses is great and get off your high horse. I think that much better. Never heard of it. No, me neither. So we can't go, oh, it's an American thing. <laughs> Which is what English do when they don't know something. They go, it's an American thing. <laughs> <laughs> what's this one? Oh, i know what this is 
Oh my goodness, she's left-handed. Do you think the artist is left-handed? Because an artist is normally left-handed if they're really good. I don't think much of their art, though, on the wall. Look at their level of art. I know what that is. Isn't it something about don't block your copy book or something like that? Meaning don't make sort of don't make yourself out doing bad things. Don't cry over spilled ink. <laughs> it shows me she's right-handed. Yes, when you lot do string yard and all those other um, things, what we call them. They're not browsers, are they? Apps, whatever. When you do all those. You instantly have it back to front. When I'm going through the YouTube live webcam, I'm still getting it the right way round. So if I go that way, that way, I know what I'm pointing at. If you're doing StreamYard or whatever, Melon, or whatever thing you use, you'd be going, oh, the... Um, I can just point there. That's there. That's the side it really is for me now. I don't know if you're seeing me backwards yet, but I'm seeing myself the way it is. But on StreamYard and all that, it automatically switches it. So people go, there's a gold bolt. Oh, no, there's a gold bolt. But on the YouTube live webcam, for me, I'm the right way round. So for me, oh, yeah. She's right. Hold on. Is that my right? Yes, she's right-handed in this, but she's left-handed now. Oh, but this is what I'm seeing here is the correct way round. This is my right hand. So are you see me the other way round? <laughs> It'd still be me waving my right hand. <laughs> this hand for me is by the chat. This is by the chat. This is by the chat. Oh, my goodness. Making your card out. <laughs> I actually have two sticker designs, but I still need to get a P.O. box. Laugh out loud. I'm so slow. <laughs> I'd love to get things, but that's something else. I feel if I get some something from somebody... You kind of feel, I feel obliged to get something from everyone. I can't do it. I really can't do it. That's why I decided to send seeds every month, pick someone randomly and uh, send out seeds. Then I feel I'm giving something. So, uh, yes, I think that's um, don't block your copy book, which means don't do something bad and people think bad of you do the right thing all the time so 14 i kind of think i'm right for that i thought you were right on the horsey one so who knows to block one's copy book there we go yeah we've got no option but to have a po box <laughs> They say when you start YouTube, you should get a P.O. box because if you become really huge and you might have weird people driving past and look at your house and all the rest of it, first of all, it's going to cost you a lot to come and find my, like drive by. You can't drive by. It's impossible. Um, you've seen my driveway in the videos anyway, but you wouldn't be passing. <laughs> and there's no mail here for miles so we have to have a PO box. Do you want to make me a sticker? Are you talking to Andrew or me? I'd love anything. I'd love anything. Anything people can give me, I will wear with pride. <laughs> I've won a few things. So, um, and anyone that knows that I won on Anne's channel on a giveaway, I said that I would uh, wait till the spring and buy some fruit trees with it. So if any of you saw that, that's what I'm doing with that. Um, this time of year, I can't wear my T-shirt I won from Gypsy and the Vanilla Gorilla, but I do try and wear that a lot. Andrew, is your, is your dress posted? I'll send you one as well. Oh, Danny, you're such a sweetheart. Oh, Danny. Oh, it's going to be one of those things where I keep saying all your channels constantly. 
<laughs> it's like I'm sponsored by channels, but I, I do appreciate things. Oh my goodness, what's this one? <laughs> We're going to have some funny answers here from you guys. <laughs> Uh, that could be a bit sinister by the he's wearing the Mac. He's got a body out the van out the back. Return the model. Goodness knows. What on earth? Return the model. Make a mummy out of her. <laughs> I broke her. <laughs> what was he doing? He's bandaged her up. <laughs> And you jump a model and return it. I mean, we could say silly things now because that's probably a saying. And you jump your model and return her. Oh, wait, show. Uh, where are we? I just had to put Andrea in uh, <laughs> back in the box, not back in the box, out the box. Uh, give me a Addy. You have to keep the address private because it's in the house. Yeah, that's something else. Um, our, I say what our home is called because that's Mike's channel name and it's on Google Maps. You just type in Olive Farm Retreat Cypress. Do that, guys, and you'll see exactly where my house is. Yay! <laughs> uh, I would like to make a return. I won't time out. No, it, I, I don't think you can see it your side because I'm ahead of you. So when I talk, I wait for an answer. I have to wait a minute <laughs> before you even see the, what I've said. Um, but it's because I'm an experimental channel. Some people are experimental for an odd thing here and there. But my whole channel is experimental because they can mess with mine because it doesn't affect anything. Whereas if they mess with your channels in, say, America... It's not fair to mess with some and not others. So about halfway through, um, what does that, about an hour in, it starts like, because they're uh, doing different things with comments, long story. But no, it says, do I want to show your comment or hide your comment? So I think she used the word private because <laughs> they're doing extra, extra strict control is what they're working on one of the things on my channel. It's not just strict control, it's, the slightest word. Oh, oh my gosh. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Uh, I'd like to make a return. Am I in timeout? No. Mine to Andrea. No worries. I understand. I'd like to make a return is my guess for my card. I've got no idea. It, she's definitely a model, isn't she? He just looks a bit sinister. He's like a delivery man. Return to sender. Return to sender because he's a delivery man. Mm, 15. 15. No, I've never heard of this either. <laughs> to sell the dummy. To sell the dummy. What's that? To sell the dummy. Oh, my goodness. I think I'm going to get rid of these cards. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of them. They're absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid. I'm surprised, Danny, you didn't get that one. <laughs> surprised you didn't get that one. Uh, okay, next one. Thank goodness it's only 18. What was this one? Oi, Jove, Jeeves. <laughs> Crikey. I think we need to go and play some polo. <laughs> uh, what's in the Times newspaper today? <laughs> I think the guy in the background's nodded off, the one over here. He's nodded off. Why, Joe, didn't your mother ever teach you to wear your slippers indoors? <laughs> get rich, get fat. Who knows, Danny? Who knows? It's probably nothing to do with anything in the picture. To turn a page, turn over a new leaf. 
<laughs> but it's got to be a reason it's set there, hasn't it? Let's ring for the butler for some tea. No idea. I'm not rich. Stop out loud. <laughs> no idea. 16. 16. Ah, to turn over a new leaf. Ha, ha, ha. But there's no purpose in that picture, is there? No purpose. <laughs> Look what Andrew's put up. That is so funny, Andrea. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a man emoji like that now. Hush, Andrea. Hush, Andrea. I'm pretty sure there's a man emoji of that now. Pretty sure. Have a look where you got that one from. I'm pretty sure there is. Oh, pretty sure. <laughs> oh, you guys. You guys are so funny. I like pasta and carbs. It's inevitable, I reckon. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, there we go. Well, that's scouts. Fire. Tell me about fire. Go, your tiny Danny. Uh, I think she was saying what the bloke was saying, Andrea. I think she was talking about the guy over here was saying it. I think it was that. She's saying that guy. I like pasta and carbs. I'm thinking that's what she was meaning. Because that's why I was dying laughing. Hey, Neil, how are you doing? If I could boss and sell methane, I could be rich. But it would cost a lot of bean and molasses. <laughs> Oh, you talk about you. Oh, I, oh, sorry. That's really good for that. Is what he's saying. That is perfect for what he's saying. I like pasta and carbs. It's inevitable, I reckon. I like it for that. Show me the other one. What, that one? That one or that one? The fire one. Fire. There's definitely going to be something about fire. Is it? Is it? What's her saying about fire? What's the same with fire? This is fun. Cool. Danny, you've got to play the last live back. As I say, go about halfway through it. <clears throat> Excuse me, about halfway through it. You'll see when I'm showing cards. That that was so funny. You should have been here for the vintage children's cards. Yeah, no longer child appropriate. There was all um, forest animals and they were wearing slippers, but it got funny. Let me put my light on. I start to go grainy. I start to go grainy. That's better. I can see myself now. Eating fire with fire. Ooh. Yes, look, because he's got fire on there. Yes, I think you have it. Fight fire with fire. Okay. Now, you know, it's going to be something completely different. Scout about for fire. <laughs> 17 that's got to be right to play with fire no i think you two were much better i'm getting rid of these cards these are absolute drifts absolute drifts okay i have to look first because i can't see properly backwards <clears throat> whatever we had it true definitely <clears throat> i think we should rewrite the answers <laughs> Plank. Don't be a plank. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't be a plank. It takes two to lift some wood. <laughs> to planky. Planky, plank guy, plank guy. <clears throat> Do I get my fire making badge now? Cool. <clears throat> That's funny, Neil. <clears throat> oh, I need to drink. <clears throat> Two planks are better than one. <laughs> Do you say planks for like silly people? That's what we say. Yeah, these don't get there if I'm making bad yet. They're taking it to the scouts. <laughs> so what's this? Wood. 
wood planks. It takes two to carry a plank. Oh, stiff as a board. That's a good one. Stiff as a board. You know, it's not going to be that now. 18. Oh, no. What? That's definitely 18. To clinch the deal. <laughs> what on earth? Oh, this is silly. To clinch the deal? What's that all about? I don't even understand that. No, never heard that one. And the picture's completely rubbish. No, we're not liking this at all. Okay. Well, he looks a bit suspicious. These are funny. No, these are terrible. These are terrible. That's, look, they had hoodies back then in the 50s. <laughs> Did any of you do what I said? Go to, um, oh, My Fair Lady, Pygmalion, and go on YouTube and type in, it's either going to be My Fair Lady or Pygmalion. Think possibly Pygmalion because that's what it's originally called for the film. And you get to the scene where the girl comes back from dancing or a party and she puts on a white light long night dress and she's dancing around the bedroom and she's holding either a tablet or an iPhone or something. And when you think how old it is, it's so funny. Like a sack of potatoes. Oh, I thought it was coal. I'm trying to think of something with coal. Might need to refill my script though. It's like a will be a service hat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I see it now. Now you've said it. I thought it was a hoodie. <laughs> okay, like a sack of potatoes. You know, it's not going to be that. <laughs> Number one, let's see how disappointed we are now. Ah, okay, I get this. This is fair. To get the sack. To get the sack. Bag of coal. Yeah, I thought it was coal. Well, it doesn't matter. It's because it's to get the sack. <laughs> to get the sack. Andrew was close. She was She was better. She's better than the answer. Are we keeping scores or no? <laughs> okay. Giraffe tongue. Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. Oh, I know it is. They banned all these sort of ravings in England. They were from Victorian times. It, they were all like spear sort of toppings, like pointies, because uh, um, thieves and young children would always climb over them and fall and get pierced. So that's a long time. <laughs> you got the sack right. Yeah, you did. Oh, bag of coal. I think like a sack of potatoes, that was a good one, because that is a proper saying. <clears throat> Fence got your tongue. I think it's sticking your neck out. Even though he stick his tongue out, I think it's sticking your neck out. It sounds like the pointy fences did their job if it was thieves. Yeah, they were just ornamental in Victoria times. But yeah. That's got to be sticking your neck out, hasn't it? It makes sense, yeah, but these card answers don't make sense. Let's see. Two. Be prepared to be amazed by a completely different answer. Ah, oh, to stick one's neck out. There we go. Even they stick his tongue out. <laughs> okay. Uh, what on earth? Okay. I thought at first this was like the chicken's leg. That's why I was looking twice. I think you're cheating. <laughs> Doesn't help. I can't see the pictures. Three chickens on the perch. Why has he got the snippers ready? Is that something to do with it? Cut your chickens. <laughs> More giant chickens. Yeah. These look like giant eggs down here, laid. 
I mean, I know there's a saying, I try to think of the saying about chickens, it's don't count your chickens till they're hatched, but that's not got relevance there. Grass is green on the other side of the fence, on the fence. Why has he got snippers? Is he something to do with it? Yeah. Hens can't swim like the ducks. <laughs> Yeah, I like on the fence, sitting on the fence. That makes sense. Who was that? Danny. Why did the chicken sit on the fence? Well, I'll tell you why the chickens sat on the fence. Because they were still the spiky ones, so they can't get off now. <laughs> yeah, on the fence, sitting on the fence. I think Danny's right. Number three. Number three. To sit on the fence, go Danny. Well done. But see, he's like a red herring, they call it, when it's something that um, puts you off of what the answer is. Oh, this looks naughty. Oh, I know, I know. Got it, got it, got it. Why is it my whole sister looking at them? That's why I want to know. Yes. Well, he's come to cut them off because they're stuck on the spear fencing. Yeah, I know this one. Yeah, Andrea's got it. Because I, I sort of say all the things in there, and I was like, well, there's a bush, and but they look like they're going to beat each other up. I was like, ah, beat it around the bush. I missed it. I walked away for a sec. What was the last one? I stuck in my box. Chickens. That was the last one. Chickens. Chickens. So, beating around the bush. Uh, don't beat around the bush. You got it, Danny. I meant the answer. Oh, um, yeah, you got it. Yeah, that's what Andrew's saying. You got it. It's sitting on the fence. I thought you meant the picture. I was like, you, you just put an answer. Yeah, that's got to be beating around the bush, hasn't it? Four. To beat about the bush. There we go. We've got that. Last one. Hmm. Yeah, see the right hand you put to me now, they're left handed. <laughs> Don't know this one. Sitting on the sidelines. Oh, excellent. I was going to say, game, set, and match. They finished. <laughs> game, set, and match. That's my favourite place because I'm lazy. <laughs> don't like watching tennis. I don't like watching most sport. I like watching sport um, like the gymnastic with ribbons. I like the group gymnastics where they all do like display thing, floor work display thingy, supervising is what I call it. Um, don't like like football or cricket or supervising. Number five, let's see, number five. No, no one's got it right yet. I've never heard of this one. Look at what they're holding. I don't know if you've heard of the saying. It's what they're holding and what they're doing with it. I've never heard of it, so you probably haven't either because I've never heard of it. So it's what they're holding and what they're doing with it. And that's the answer, supposedly. Order of the cult. That's a good one. No, it's something about what they're holding and what they're doing with it. So the word for what they're holding is part of the answer and what they're doing with it. I'll let the racket do the talking. <laughs> yeah, so funny. What they're doing with them. It's definitely rackets in the answer. That's a good one. Oh, dear. <clears throat> to stand the racket. Rocket rest. Racket rest. 
to stand the racket. Anyone heard of that? Or make a racket? Now, that would have been a good one. No, to stand the racket. These are going to charity. <laughs> so at least so so far now, I've got rid of something in the box. That is going to charity. And some poor other person can have fun with that. What else have I got in this box? Oh, you know these? Tamagotchis. Do you guys know these? And that, that's just my puppy. So they were little pets. You had to keep uh, playing with them and feed them. And Tamagotchi, however you spell it. It's all right. I'm not going to spell check you. <laughs> I remember those. Yay. Do you remember what one you had? Was it an animal or a baby? I think they were babies. <clears throat> I don't know if it would still work. And you had to feed them and heart them. It's obviously not working, don't. <laughs> no battery. And if you left them alone for too long, they died, didn't they? Didn't they start as an egg? Didn't they started as an egg? <clears throat> I kept my life for so long as original, but I accidentally left it in the rain one day. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it was to make you keep going back to it, which was interesting. Yeah, I can't remember much else about them. Yeah, I can't remember much else about them, apart from you had to feed them and did you have to brush them or something? As I say, no one was baby. And didn't they grow? They grew as well, I think. Yeah, Tamagotchi. Now that I think about it, that's probably where my anxiety started. It must have been one of the first, keep going back to it. Probably, if you think, Tamagotchi, wasn't that Japanese? And weren't they the inventors of the first mobile phones, i.e. got to keep tapping it, tapping it, tapping it. And they were getting the generation of children of this era to get used to keep touching things and looking at things. Hmm. Hmm, the original, very demanding. <clears throat> yes, I wonder, was that the predecessor to keep looking, pressing buttons? Yes, hmm, I have to keep that. I have to see if I can get a battery for it. Oh, I've got some more playing cards. Donkey. I don't think, no, this hasn't got an age on it, an age, a year. Made in England. Ooh. Ooh. Everything was made in Taiwan, mostly, in England. Made in China. Uh -huh. So we were talking about the newer in time cards were the less artistic they were. So we haven't even got anything on the back. Oh, this looks like it's going to be animals. Oh, Furby. That's too old for Furbies. I had a Furby, which I quickly turned off because it freaked me out at night. I didn't like the way they were, like, hard, weren't they? Because they had the big battery pack thing in. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't have a Furby. That's too old for a Furby. So, donkey cards. <clears throat> Leo the lion <clears throat> Leo the lion I'm glad to see these animals aren't wearing slippers But he does seem to have possessed some glasses and a hat from somewhere <gasps> How can a lion be short-sighted or long-sighted? Huh? Oh, how to play donkey It'd be funny the names as well, these animals so we have Gertie the Goose. Gertie the Goose. Well, she's acquired some clothes. Isn't it funny when you get like cartoon shows and that, they put clothes on animals, but they only put like tops on them. They never had bottoms. <laughs> oh, I lie. Mickey Mouse had bottoms. 
Let's think. Let's think for a moment. A lot of them had tops, didn't they? And they never had bottoms. Hmm. Try to think of some now as an example. Donald Duck. Maybe it's ducks, maybe ducks because they can't get the trousers to fit because they're funny bottoms and legs. Maybe it's ducks. Can I think of any other animals, animations that just had tops? I guess it's better to show what critter it is or to see their bottom. <laughs> uh, I think it would have been too awkward to draw trousers on something like that. They'd just have to wear a long, stretchy, elastic skirt, wouldn't they? Elastic waisted skirt. <laughs> oh, Freddy the fox. Now he's got the whole suit going on there. No shoes. No shoes. Freddy the fox. It'd be hot in winter with all that fur and the clothes. Yeah, see, he's got, like, proper legs, so it's not a problem, trousers for him. Cute. <laughs> Two of those, because we're obviously going to get pears. Uh, Curly the squirrel. My dad used to call me Curly amongst other names, because I've said before that I always had really tight ringlets. When I was younger and they were real, they weren't like faked or whatever. And people used to think my mum had done all these ringlets on me and it was just my hair. They dropped out as I got older because my hair's really thick, like really thick. Yeah, no slippers here. <laughs> but it seemed to be when they went out in the woods, they had to have slippers. So here we have, guess what the goat's name is? Billy the goat, he's got trousers. Yeah, he's, he's got proper legs. So, yeah, they can make trousers on him. Billy the goat. Yeah, the artwork's not as good, is it? I love the old ones. Oh, we've got the donkey. We found the donkey. There's the donkey. Oh, he's folding his arms. He's got black nail varnish on. <laughs> got black nail varnish. <clears throat> Guess what the lamb's called? <laughs> Larry the lamb, obviously. Only got a bow as Larry. Perhaps he's like a baby because he's a lamb. So he hasn't got all the attire yet. My grandmother used to say, donkey, donkey. <laughs> Donkey. Ah. Skippy the bunny. Not a rabbit. He's a bunny. Skippy the bunny. They quite like bows, these animals, don't they? I think they've nearly all had a bow, bow or a skull. Hair, hair. Oh dear. <laughs> Do we think the elephant's a bit stupid? <laughs> Bimbo, the elephant. Bimbo. Yes, because he's trying to play the trumpet in the air. That will never work, Bimbo. And he can't really hold drumsticks. There's Bimbo, the elephant. I agree, Furby was creepy. I didn't really see them in action. Wasn't it something someone else had one? They could talk or they'd just come alive at night or whatever. Timothy the tiger. Timothy the tiger is going to the beach. <laughs> Dickie the mouse. Dickie the mouse. They moved and made weird noises that got creepier as the battery died. <laughs> yeah, were they supposed to learn more or something? Hetty the hippo loves karaoke. <laughs> like her eyelashes. 
Well, cute. She's going to trip over, though. She's caught her toe on her dress. Poor love. Here. We must have nearly all of them by now. Bertie the ball. He likes a flower necklace, does Bertie. Cool. The hippo is cute. Yeah, I like the hippo. It's probably one of my favourites so far. <clears throat> Nikki the bear. Nikki the bear. I'm not sure what it's supposed to teach me other than to keep fresh batteries in your toys. I think it was the era of all toys were battery operated. Pretty much. Katie the cat. Katie the cat. That's pretty. I like that one. That's pretty. She's perfect. <laughs> She's perfect. Must have done nearly all because I've only got a few left. I don't think we've had all the pairs yet. Mickey the monkey. He's having a fab time. He's playing for the hippo. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> he's cool. You're so funny, Dawn. <laughs> you're, <coughs> you're just here for my accent, I know. Peter the penguin. Peter the penguin. They always make penguins waiters. I suppose it's because they're black and white. They look like waiters, don't they? We've had Billy the goat. Dusty the dog. I like him. Got a whole band going on, haven't they? We've had lots of singing and playing instruments. I like him. Look at his face. Oh. He's looking a bit woff. <laughs> There's another donkey. And Leo the lion. Yeah, they're okay. They're okay. As I say, the artwork, not as good. The old ones really had time spent on those. Uh, oh, I found the instructions for the Tamagotchi, my virtual pet. Right, tell us. Welcome for bringing a lovely, wonderful pet into your possession. It requires much of your conscience and cordially to take good care of it by feeding, cleaning, playing with it at all suitable times and to observe its health conditions and disciplines with good treatment for healthy and happy growth. <clears throat> Um, I do love accents. I was watching Radio Jonesy this morning. I don't even remember what he was talking about, but I love his accent. Yeah, I was watching. He was on um, The Astute Tourist. I'll put his channel link up today. I feel more educated when I come to your lives. I'm always learning. Something's good, something's bad. But I could listen to you talk all day. I love it. Guilty as charged. <laughs> <clears throat> what else does it say about Tamagotchi? Uh, general descriptions. This game is to train the player mm -hmm, to be responsible towards the game and treat the game as one of his or her own lovely little pet. That's, for me, that's an excuse that it's teaching you to be on demand for a pet. Your pet in the game will grow up with the care of the player. The player should try their best to keep feeding, cleaning and playing. <clears throat> um, oh, yeah. Had a timer on it. So if you hadn't done anything to it for a while, an alarm would go off. I remember that now. I need to send you a card game for your live stall. <laughs> cool. I've just edited today for my other channel. I don't know if any of you were around when I showed the, I called it the ant puzzle, but it's bugs and it's just square tiles and you have to just put them in the right order. I've actually finished the puzzle. So it's not like jigsaw pieces. It's just squares and you just got to put them in the right order. Finally finished doing that and I've edited it. So probably won't go up this Wednesday because I always have one ready to, all written in what I'm posting, so it'll probably be the following Wednesday. I 
I'm posting that up. I love jigsaw puzzles and any puzzles. I think that's different. Don't like number puzzles. Don't like to think numbers. <clears throat> uh, it's about putting the battery in. Ah, here's what you do with it. I'll go come right under the light because it's very small. You can look at Black's Tropical Homestead. <laughs> uh I looked up card games right now, and the first that came up are Exploding Kittens. Okay, that sounds cool. And Throw Throw Burrito. Yeah, people get, um, sometimes people invent games, and then they send them to YouTubers. I'd love that. Or books. <laughs> um, health Index. Oh, it's how to do it. But the health is age, weight. Happiness, hunger, discipline, feeding. Do not feed it when it's not hungry, naughty, or sleeping. Medical treatment. If your pet is sick, the sick mark will appear in the screen. Bring it to see the doctor. Give your pet medicine and it will recover. If it is sick, your pet will not play. Sleeping. Take good care of your pet. Get it to sleep between 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. Yeah, because you can go to sleep then. Do not feed or play with it in this period. Turn off the light when your pet goes to sleep or else it will not sleep well and will get sick early and it will refuse to play with you. I have to make sure it's appropriate then send you one to play with us. That would be really cool. Uh, I think I have the only child left in this generation that enjoys books, board games, puzzles and playing cards. Oh. Where are we? That's great, Danny. We enjoy them too. My daughter entered teenage land. I'm not cool anymore, though. You are cool. <laughs> you are cool. Um, I've lost a bit I was on because I dropped it. Uh, playing. Playing with your pet will increase. Did children have better eyesight? <laughs> it's tiny. I don't know if you can see it. You're probably like, no, I can read that. It's absolutely tiny. I think so. Playing. Playing with your pet will increase its happiness index, which will indicate the degree of happiness of your pal. Uh, if the direction you have chosen, which is the same as your pet chose. Oh, this is in the game. You win the game. I don't remember playing a game with the pet. And the happiness index will be increased. Then your pet will show a happy face on the screen. Otherwise, if you lose the game, your pet will be upset and the happiness index remains unchanged. The game shows the player... To guess the direction, up, down, etc. Okay, cleaning. When you use the... Oh, the dump, as in like the emoji, you know, in this screen. You should bring your pet to the toilet. There we go. Discipline. If the discipline index is zero your pet will become naughty and will refuse to play with you it will not eat anything even though it feels hungry you should discipline and educate and then hint indicator and it obviously tells you what oh here we go it goes baby kid youth kid to me is a baby goat so it changes from a baby dog as in puppy, to a baby goat, to a youth, and then you don't know which one it's going to change into, and then goodbye, elderly. 
<laughs> Goodbye, elderly. <laughs> Goodbye, elderly. I don't know if you can see. Oh, yeah, I think you can see that. So you've either got a dog one or I think it's a dinosaur, the bottom one. And then obviously it can grow. The dog can become any of those three. Yeah, it goes elderly, goodbye, and then an angel, and it flies up to the sky with angel wings. Look, so you couldn't keep them forever anyway, then, because as it gets old, it would die anyway. And then I seem to recall if it died, you can't start again. I think that's the end of that Tamagotchi, as in you have to buy a whole new one. I don't know if I'm right on that. That seems to bring back memories let's see what you guys been saying uh i'll have to make sure it's appropriate that's great danny we enjoy them my daughter and she, i read that one uh emma will be turning 12 my goodness in december that's why it tickles me she still enjoys those things that is lovely danny yes at 12 that is lovely didn't realise you had a daughter, Andrea. I guess I have my head in the sand. Danny, she rarely appears. And there is a beautiful video when she tests one of the melon recipes. Which one is it, Andrea? Oh, it's beautiful to watch that one. Uh, oh, it was that, um, the flat stuff. <laughs> you call it different to me, what we call it. And I said it reminded me of the toffee that we have here made from the carobs on the flat sheets the watermelon you uh cooked made into the flat sheets she taste tests that one that's a beautiful video i loved it so yeah that's why you don't know about her she hides sometimes you have to put things on a flesh and billboard for me no she's never in them she hides from the camera she's 16 well, she only 16. Goodness, she looked older. I have to beat my daughter away from the camera. <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, well, we laugh out loud. Not really, but she does enjoy stealing the show. It's hard enough to get my husband involved. Yeah, he's funny. Um, she said she doesn't want to be on YouTube. I had one video... And she asked me to unlist it. <laughs> Is it the one I'm talking about? Oh, I hope it's not that one. That was lovely. She did say I can record her horse riding lessons, though, since she's far away. So I may do that. <laughs> when you come out here, bring your daughter and then you could go riding down the stables. I think you can restart them, I think. Oh, the Tamagotchi is not the daughter's. <laughs> Restart the daughters. <laughs> Mike often presses a remote at me to mute me sometimes. <laughs> he likes to mute me, so he just presses the uh, remote at me to mute me. I get the message sometimes. <laughs> or sometimes I I go, oh, I thought you press a fast forward, and I do all like mad craziness. <laughs> So I think you press the fast forward, darling. <laughs> or I can repeat what I just said because it was recorded. <laughs> it's fun in our house. Uh, uh, where are we? It was a fail. It was a fail and a wing video. Don't think I know that one. Do I know that one? Fail and a wing. Oh, yeah. 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 I do know that one. Yeah, yeah. I was like, found me, what did you bow? <laughs> oh, hello, Mr. Waffles. Uh, Eric doesn't like to be involved either. He's a private guy. I understand. He'll be appearing in my Last Chance Cook-Off video, though. Oh, I have to check that one out for sure. Yes, it's that video. Ah, oh, it is that one. I don't know what videos are called sometimes. Oh, that's sad. That was beautiful. I hope you've kept it, though, for yourself. I most definitely will watch the horse lessons. That would be neat. Are you going to Cyprus, Andrea? Take me with you. I think you should come. I've got two accommodations, 
so depends how many of you are coming like in your group kind of thing so i've got to what i call separate but um we'll figure something out if you came out at the same time just let me know how many and i'll tell you if i can cope with it <laughs> so, so i've got different places but it's how many of you come in your family that would be fun it would be fun i'm still waiting for my first youtuber to come well, just imagine what videos we could make <laughs> we could do some really cool videos yay that would be absolutely great i would love that that would be so much fun definitely what else have i got in the box oh these do you know these where you slide these around to put them in the right order and slide them these things i don't mind these they annoy me it's sometimes <laughs> well, it swings around about sometimes Is that, oh, i thought the four was the wrong way around yeah uh no i've got beds and sofa beds and that but what i'm saying is let's say you're in your family there was three i've got an area if you'd all sleep in the same area i have three separate areas as in accommodation so to speak um i have beds I have beds and sofa beds nothing wrong with that the thing is i don't feed people <laughs> that's the downside i don't feed people our worker wires like the volunteers that i do through work wire site um if you ask them to help each day three hours or less you don't have to provide them with food or feed them so that's why i only ask for three hours plus i want them to go out and see places um also if you feed them they've got to hang around for your evening meal so they want to be out and have a holiday as well as helping so i don't feed one of our accommodations eventually will have its own kitchen shower and toilet that one's not finished yet um <clears throat> one has got the cookout that you must have seen the cookout if you look on mike's channel you'll see the cookout and that's got um a utility block so a separate shower toilet and a cookout and then we were doing before covid an airbnb in our house one of our spare bedrooms and that i did breakfast so we called that bed and breakfast but they weren't then allowed to use my kitchen so it was purely bed and breakfast because mike doesn't like people using our kitchen basically i don't cook i don't provide food um so if you're coming as airbnb you pay and have to feed and sort yourself out if you come as a work wire you do three hours five days a week and then the rest of the time's yours i don't cook or provide food if you come as a friend i still don't cook or provide food <laughs> i don't i don't like even making cups of tea for people <laughs> so if you're happy to provide for yourself I provide accommodation. That's it. Uh, obviously, I provide the gas for cooking, things like that, that kind of thing. Let me see. Where are we? That would be fun. As long as you feed me. Yeah, we don't feed you. And that was the other thing. We had a recent someone apply for a doing work away, and it clearly says if it's three hours or less, you have to provide your own food and cook your own food and uh, they said oh but could you actually provide that for us i was like well first of all you'd have to do five hours and secondly why would we pay for food and feed you when we're giving you accommodation pre-accommodation holiday if you like just do three hours and you're on holiday um when we don't provide food for our paying airbnb guests so we can't give more for a work wire than we give for a paying guest. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Uh, where are we? Uh, if I make it public again, is it going to notify everyone again? Make what public again? 
I'll make it public again. Is it going to notify everyone again? Oh, you talk about your video. You can just put private. Just click private when you is where you post it. If it's for members or uh, premiere or whatever else, there's a thing that says private there or an unlisted. If that's what you're talking about, I don't think it will let me share the link. Oh yes, you can. Yes, yes, you can share it just to. I think one of the options it says something like you know where you post it, the last page of posting. And there's an option that says share, share to only those who have been given the link. So I think you've got to possibly, as you've already made it. No, you can just change that from where you had it up. Just change it to that and then give Danny the link. Yes. Yes. Uh, I can hardly get Eric to go to the grocery store with me. I doubt he'd go to Cyprus. You don't need to bring him? Why do you need to bring him? He doesn't want to come? You could come. There you go. If Andrea really did come with you, you can come with people or just you two. I don't mind. Bring, bring the girls that want to come. Is Eric your hubby man? <laughs> Happy man, like that. Yes. Ten long years ago. <laughs> so you have exclusive people in your family too. Laugh out loud. Indeed. Andrea can cook for me then. Sure. I mean, we do like a barbecue night or something like that, but I don't want to. It's part of my condition as well. I have enough trouble doing Things like that. I have to think about like the kettles on, the cookers on. It's just traumatic for me. So I tend not to want to do it for people. I have said before, even make a cup of tea for someone. I asked them about five times to have milk. It, I, it just doesn't relate. So it's too much for me. Too much. But yes. Give me some sticks, a match, and a cast iron skittle. I'll make us something. That's cool. And Mike doesn't like to cook because. You, first of all, you get people with all these, I don't eat that, I don't eat that, I don't eat that, that kind of thing that winds him up. If he's cooking, he's cooking and that's what you're getting. And secondly, he doesn't like people, you know, someone won't eat it or doesn't eat it or, or then that's why he's full. <laughs> I'm sure if you two come, we'll figure something out. Indeed, we have days. Uh I was talking about the video. Cool. Yeah, I'll just send it to Danny through email. It says anyone with the link can watch. That's it. Or you can just email. I don't know how long it is. You can just email it directly without a video link or anything, can't you? You can just email, like, add it. What do you call it? When you make an email, you can add paper clip it or whatever. If it's not too long, if it's long, it just sends it in parts. So you don't need to worry about that either, I don't think. Get away from my trees. Oh, my God, the niece is in the house. Get away from my trees. <laughs> and again, if anyone doesn't know what the niece is talking about, we were saying this bloke, what's he saying? And that was another laugh. It went on and on and on. Get away from my trees. <laughs> Get away from my trees. What are you doing, lady? How dare you? What did my trees do to you? Oh, I love it. Ah, oh, morning. Oh, dear, that is so funny. <laughs> Does anyone else want to add to the caption of what this man's saying? I haven't got the other pictures here, but there was one with the boat. It looked like it was rowboat, when, like it was drifting down the river. And Laura was saying about, he was saying about his wife, was his wife still asleep in the boat in the river? Yeah, anyone want to add what this man's saying? I'm saying as well, my best one, I think, is I'm a teapot. I'm a teapot. I'm a teapot. 
I'm a teapot. I'm a teapot. I'm a teapot. <laughs> uh, beautiful painting. Thank you. Has this got a date on? Yes, June 2004. Dawn did this. June 2004. Let me pull back a bit so you can see all of it together. There's quite a bit to it. Um, did we notice? I think we said there was a church at the back. Yes, there's a church up here. Some trees. I need to get back to my painting. I'm not any good, but I enjoy it. Trees aren't bad in this one. Trees are quite good. I like the trees, clouds. <laughs> that was so funny, Denise, as you popped up. Get away from my trees. <laughs> He's saying, I'm never going to get a rise. <laughs> Yeah, that's clever. That's a clever one. I like that. Oh, my poor back. I'm stuck. Hey, you. <laughs> Come and help me. Oh, dear. <coughs> that's so funny. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Oh, that was so funny. Denise just popped up with it. That was awesome. <laughs> what else is in my box I'm going through? Oh! Now, what do you guys call these? Jacks or five stones? These things. Where you throw them up in the air, oh, <laughs> you throw them up in the air and then you catch them on the back of your hand. And some have dropped on the floor, maybe. And if they've dropped on the floor, um, oh, you have to throw one up because there's different versions. I've got the bouncy ball versions as well, jacks. And then you have to throw it up, don't you? And then before you catch it, You've got to pick up one off the floor and then catch this one again. I used to like that. That would be good for my hand therapy. And, yeah, five stones was the original because it was stones and then they made little cubes and then these are jacks. I used to love playing that. But as I say, I've got the bouncy ball version as well. So instead of a, a jack that you threw up and picked up one off the floor and then caught, um caught it again you bounced the ball and then you had to do two didn't you throw it up in the air grab two before you caught and so on and so forth yeah jacks oh that's cool i wonder if i'm giving you ideas of things for your daughter danny she might like to do jacks oh i'm going to kick those out got another set here two sets Another set there, the ball. So there's those. Yeah, definitely keeping those. They're cool. Ah, I've talked about this. This is an original, original one because this is before anyone even knew what these were. Rubik's Cube and the proper ones don't come apart <laughs> and I used to be able to do it I used to be able to do it I don't know if I could still do it I don't know what else we've got in here oh cup for dice for when you roll the dice counters and can you see that mini dice, little mini dice in there, tiddly winks, no tiddly winks. You've got a big counter and then you use it to ping the small counters into a cup. So tiddly winks is quite fun. Oh, there's a cup to put them into. 
so you'll have a colour and then you get the big one and you have to like flip using the end of it. You pack with a stag. <laughs> I could go have my dinner in a minute. Tea dinner, evening. So yeah, you flip the with the big counter, your little ones in it, who gets them all in first flipping. That's quite fun. What's in here? These little I think that was a lipstick holder initially. It's quite pretty. Ah, lots of dice. Or die. Plural is die. Plural of dice is die. I always get hungry during my lives. So that cake. Cake. What else we got? Nearly at the end of this box. We go to I get to the end of the box. So this has got number two. Open it out. Number two, 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 two. And on this side is three. And then you open it again. Four. <laughs> it's got to be a number one somewhere then. So it's just like you keep opening them. Three, two. Where's number one then? Oh, I found it. One. <laughs> So it's like one bit, but you keep turning it inside out. So you've got one, two, three, still two. Oh, can't open them. Now I've lost number four. Ah, there's number four. <laughs> four. Do you like that? It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I used to make things like that. Like, it's not magic tricks, is it? But things like that. Magic with science. Ah, uh, I've got these. I don't know what you guys call it. Beetle drive or something like that. And you throw the dice. If you get a six, you can draw a body. If you throw a five, you draw the head. And you take turns throwing the dice. And it's who draws the beetle the same as that first. Number four, you need to throw two times a number four because you need two antennae. Tongue, you can draw in when you get a three. Eyes, obviously, you need two of those. So you need to throw a two. And you need to throw a number one six times because you need six legs. Meow, come up then. Come up. Come up. He's got a bad eye at the minute. I don't know what he's done. He's poked his eye. Come on then. Meow, can you hear him? So you just take turns throwing the dice, pass the dice round, and if you throw a number of something you haven't got, oh, there he is. He's up. Then uh, you can draw the beetle. That's quite a good, easy game. Just need the dice. Hello, Mr. Colin Waffles. You see his bad eye. Bad eye. Uh, I found a card game called Pun Intended. Oh, that one looks fun. And yes, I'm still shopping for our future card game with dog. Oh, you're sweet. Welcome back, sweet kitty. He's always hanging. That's not the way I'm holding him. I'm not killing him. <laughs> this is what he does. He hangs. <laughs> It always looks like I'm killing him. I just ate and then got sick. Oh, I haven't done that since I was pregnant. Oh, Ooh, you heard it here first, maybe. Oh, Danny. Oh, oh, mm. <laughs> Andrea. Mm. Mm. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Hope not. Oh, oh. Okay, what else we got? Oh, I've got a bit of paper explaining the game. <laughs> I do this a lot. I write things, not properly, and then I go back and I haven't got a clue, clue what I'm on about. So that's obviously the playing graph. You draw that. Two counters each. Y, Y, B, B, stop. Plaque, Pong, 
something or other. Wasn't planned starting over, starting over with another bouncing baby girl. Ooh. So there's that. We've got two normal playing cards, normal. One's on the floor. A mini pack of playing cards. I mean, obviously, I would be would love it, but I just say that's what has happened. It wasn't planned. Wasn't planning on. And then the last thing in the box, and then I'm going. <laughs> Golden egg. This is quite a good card game. What are you doing? He's rubbing his uh, cheek on the empty box. My daughter was a plan. It happened right after my husband proposed. Whoops. Whoops, indeed. Mike has, I think, 16 or 17 grandchildren now. Fox, pay two to dog. Oh, this is like that beat your neighbour game, a bit like that. I get out of breath taking the trash to the end of the driveway. I had a hard time thinking about making it through childbirth again at 32. Whoops. <laughs> That's a lot of grandbabies. Sure is. Horse. Pay one to farmyard. I used to like this game. And you can play it either with counters or with cards. Each player takes one from the pool. Tell you what, if I you do get a game, I'll do it on the stream yard, and then you can come up properly, guys. The Golden Goose. That was a good thing. I can't remember what that was. You take the pot, I think. I think you take the pot, all the coins. We've done a fox. We've done a take one. Grey Goose, take two from the pool. Certainly, Danny. Certainly. I had my oven removed. <laughs> removed. That's funny. That's a fox. Dog. Pay one to farmer. Oop, I nearly dropped them all. Ah, another dog. He's got a scarf. Aw. What are you doing? Oh, there's a gecko outside. I've got the screen on. There's a gecko outside and Colin's trying to get him. <laughs> Don't take him. He comes every night. Leave him alone. The golden egg. Why are you on my desk anyway? Egg. Hey, one to Paul. That looks like the baby in um, Teletubbies. Uh, the sun. The sun face. And I can't remember. I think it was... The second one or the first one that was the face was one of my dancing pupils from my stage school. I'm uh, going to rub it in everyone's face I knew first. Uh, uh, pig, pay one to farmer. That's quite sweet. I've got... Um, it's not china, but it's uh, an ornament, a bit like that, on top of my dresser. Got a few piggies on there, dressed piggies. Oh, milkmaid. Received two from the farmer's wife. <laughs> Got fox, cow. Joker pays one to cow. Well, we've all got to go on Danny's tomorrow. Anyway, her live. I, you know, Danny. I said to you, I tried. To, I was coming on last Tuesday. I'm like Tuesday. I'm going to go on everyone's live so I can get on. And then with Anne's extended giveaway, it was just getting so late. I was like, no. So I will try and come on tomorrow. Farmer's wife received one from each player. Oh, they are her shoes. I thought there were shoes in front of her, but they're her shoes. 
Yeah, it's just because it's my night. And obviously, poor Mike, he becomes a YouTube widow. <laughs> Hen and chickens, all eggs turned up. Pay one to Paul. Did look like the shoes were in front. Sure did. Ah, oh, the farmer. I have to remember how to play this. It sounds like you have to leave things turned up or something. I think that's all the cards. It's the egg. Oh, Joker. I haven't had Joker. Joker received two from each player. <laughs> like him. He's cool. He's a happy soul. <laughs> I think that's all. I don't remember any other ones. We've done horse, didn't we? Did you? Oh, the farmyard. That's pretty. Oh, whose house is this? <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, egg. Take two for each player. Dog. I didn't. I just kept putting them behind. We've done the chicken. Yeah, we've done all those. So I've emptied that box. <laughs> All I think I'm getting rid of from there is that stupid game we played. That's going. That's going to be donated. I've got a friend who uh, takes all stuff I donate and gives them to all different charities or whatever. I just leave it to her, whatever she feels needs what. So that's going. Uh, I don't know. Things like this. I wonder if I should put down in, uh, like, for the workaways or something like that, if they just want to fiddle, maybe. Definitely keeping the cards from the last episode. <laughs> Definitely keeping those, that's something. Definitely keeping the jacks. Keep the Rubik Cube. So not a lot's gone from there, really. I'm going to see if I can get another battery for that, because you need to. need to do that. And the dice, yeah, and the jacks. So, yeah, it didn't get rid of much out of there. One thing. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, we'll leave it there. The Uzo's finished. <laughs> so I need to go. I'll go and get some dinner. What time is it now? Oh, it's 8, 8 p.m. here now. So I will go. I thank you for your company now. I also thank those of you who are watching back later. If you made it to the end, wow, well done. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that very much. And until next time, be seeing you. Tell me in the comments below if you know what that's from. So until next time, you all have a great night. Thanks for keeping me company and thanks for the laughs. And I'm looking forward to you emailing me with when you're coming to stay <laughs> so until next time as always maraki